So Yuma, hello. I begin by acknowledging that I am speaking to you from Ngunnawal country in Australia. I pay my respect to Ngunnawal elders past, present and emerging. In this presentation, I'm showing images of my property, Gozinta, which is located 80 kilometres from Australia's capital city, Canberra. Next slide, thanks. In 2025, the English phrase cultural landscape will celebrate 100 years of usage, acknowledging the time since it was first coined. Closer still, December 2022 will mark 30 years since the category of cultural landscape was adopted by the UNESCO World Heritage Committee at its meeting in Santa Fe, USA. Such longevity seems remarkable, despite the diverse meanings of the term within and across disciplines. Recognition of its many actual and perceived shortcomings, its ambiguous, often confused and slippery meanings, and even more, its complicated, often culturally adapted meanings when translated into non-English languages and across diverse geographical regions. Next slide, thanks. The idea of cultural landscape has a long history in the fields of geography and art history. In 1925, the American geographer Carl Sawyer, strongly influenced by German antecedents, is credited with co coining the phrase itself. Subsequently, landscape studies expanded from the 1950s, though the phrase cultural landscape was not typically used, as evident in the seminal writings of, for example, landscape historian W.G. Hoskins, geographer Donald W.A. Maynig, writer J.B. Jackson, cultural and historical geographer Dennis Cosgrove, and academic George Seddon. Typically, these studies focused on past or historic rural landscapes. From the mid-1970s, landscape archaeology also shaped constructs of landscape, though archaeologists also did not typically use the phrase cultural landscapes. By the 1970s, the concept of cultural landscapes began to be co-opted and adapted by heritage practitioners and site managers. Though usage of the term varied between different English speaking countries such as Canada, USA, Australia and the United Kingdom. It was not until 1992 when the term was introduced into world heritage processes and practices that it truly gained widespread global attention. Despite conceptual and definitional challenges, the idea of cultural landscapes has increasingly entered real world practice and perhaps most pervasively in the field of heritage conservation, including cultural heritage management. What has emerged is a diverse suite of practices and tools for identifying, documenting, evaluating, protecting and managing cultural landscapes. As Australian cultural geographer Leslie Head notes, Cultural landscape is not just one idea, but the concept of cultural landscape has changed over time and evokes a range of contrasting understandings in different, different regions of the world within different di academic disciplines and different government contexts. While there is a vast literature on the subject and endless definitions, cultural landscapes can be considered to encompass three broad meanings cultural landscape as place, as process, and as practice. So first, cultural landscape as place. In the sense of a property, cultural landscape can apply to a selected region of the earth that has been transformed by human ecological interaction. That is, cultural landscape as a heritage place, as in the Ikram illustration on this slide, with tangible and intangible attributes and values. The usage is commonly applied, for example, in constructing heritage conservation registers through listing processes. An essential component of such listing is the need to inscribe boundaries, that is a water catchment boundary or a grouping of land parcels, in order that a circumscribed area is determined to be a cultural landscape, such as the English Lake District or Budgebim cultural landscape on Gunditjmara country in Australia. While this is a legitimate use of cultural landscape, it is also an artificial selection process because all parts of the world's surfaces are potentially cultural landscapes. And here I include seascapes and waterscapes, since the entirety of the Earth's surface has been transformed by human ecological interaction, as evident in the geological term Anthropocene. 
In this sense, I argue that the use of cultural landscape as a place or property is only useful when the construct advances the understanding and stewardship of a heritage place. Next slide. Second, cultural landscape as process. This usage incorporates um, cultural lands, sorry, this usage incorporates cultural landscape as a physical locale or place but is also broader and recognises cultural landscape as part of social ecological systems. That is integrated, complex and dynamic systems of people and nature. Cultural landscape as process is an intellectual construct that can be used to understand human ecological systems that go beyond settlement patterns, land use patterns and physical systems. This view is linked minutes. to the con Thank you. you have two minutes. This view is linked to the concept arising in the late 1980s within newer cultural geographies and archaeology and influenced by cultural studies of landscape as process with a focus on the cultural meaning of the ordinary and everyday, rather than necessarily the monumental and extraordinary. I note that cultural landscape as process aligns now with the wi now widely held view that heritage is a cultural and social process as articulated by heritage scholar Laura Jane Smith and a social cultural action as formulated by Dennis Byrne. Next slide, thanks. Third, cultural landscape can be considered a set of practices, methods and tools. While such approaches may not be as explicit as the historic urban landscape approach, for example, there is a wide range of practices applied in landscape studies. These include landscape characterization, landscape archaeology, biographical and biohydrological approaches, um, and even approaches to cultural landscapes of outer space. Given the range of possible approaches, it is common to use multi method and multiple evidence based approaches in undertaking cultural landscape studies and assessments. Next slide, thanks. These three meanings can be applied in identifying enormous diversity of cultural landscapes, adopting cultural landscape as place and process, and are relevant to the ways in which they might be managed, care, cared for and safeguarded, that is cultural landscape as practice. Thinking about cultural landscapes in the ways outlined here is useful in a practical sense because the different meanings link cultural landscape identification with a diversity of evaluation and management tools. In conclusion, I suggest trying to find a one size fits all definition for cultural landscapes is futile. Rather, applying the meanings to specific places and situations can accommodate views of cultural landscapes as part of a system that views heritage as a social, cultural, political, and future oriented activity. Next slide. Thank you very much.